Welcome to supporting your student through careers and internship opportunities for domestic and international students. My name is Sana Nelson, and I am the Alumni Relations Officer in the Office of Alumni and Families Relations. I am very happy to be able to welcome you all to this uh, event. I would like to share quickly a few housekeeping rules. We are keeping our audience muted so that there are no background noise and everyone is able to hear the speakers. We are also uh, recording this uh, webinar so that the others are able to access it. I know it is a time that can be difficult in a lot of people around the world. So um, we are happy to be able to offer the recording, uh, which will be available after uh, the, the session. I also want to mention that uh, closed captioning are available. If you would like to uh, choose to have those, you can access them uh, through the uh, menu bar at the bottom of your screen. It's in the lower right. You can uh, pick live transcripts. And also, if you do not want to have those uh, closed captioning, you can click hide uh, subtitles. So that's an option as well. But we want to make this available to everyone. Uh, so uh, we decided to put the closed captioning. Um, we will have about 40 minutes of this session as presentations, and it will be followed by a uh, question and answer period. Uh, many parents have submitted questions ahead of time. Thank you so much for those. They have uh, influenced our speakers as they develop their presentations. Uh, the way we will handle new questions will be to ask you to please chat those questions to in the Q&A. And uh, both myself and my co colleague, Anu Mishian, who's from Student Services, will be fielding those questions and then submitting them out loud to the speakers who will uh, answer them. Uh, we will also be posting links on the chat box as the speakers are mentioning uh, different websites. So keep an eye on the chat to be able to access those links. And now I would like to introduce uh, Gwen Walford Miller and Charles Miller, who are uh, the co-chairs of, of our Family Social and Communications Committee. Mm -hmm. They are the proud parent of Helena, who is a textile student graduating in 2022. Uh, Gwen is Director of Clinical Services at Quality Health Care Inc. in New Jersey and Pennsylvania. She is a current board, sorry, <laughs> board member of High Science AIDS Foundation and a former National Bank Black Nurse Association trustee. Charles is a distribution uh, supervisor at PSENG, and they are both part of our Families Association Leadership Council. And now, with uh, no further ado, let me give you uh, Gwen and Charles, who will start us through the content portion of uh, this webinar. Hi. Gwen? Hi, thank you. Okay, um, I want to thank everybody for joining us. This is the second of a series of webinars specific to families. It is a part of the recent effort to expand families programming through the development of families website and quarterly newsletters. Uh, we're gonna give you a, a brief uh, experience of us um, being a parent of a RISD student. Uh, our daughter is a junior right now, majoring in textiles at RISD. She's a leading advocate for uh, attending RISD during her junior year in high school. We knew nothing about the school, believe it or not. Um, we followed her through the formation of her portfolio and the mission process to get into RISD. Um, it was a very uh, overwhelming and, and exhaustive uh, application process, but uh, she was very delighted to be accepted by RISD. Um, shortly after uh, attending the RISD uh, weekend in 2018, we joined the Parent Council. Uh, we enjoyed the campus tours of the studios, the career development session with uh, Ken and uh, the parent reception with President Summerson. Helena's freshman year was an introduction to the long hours of study, but she found time to join chess, tennis club, and also uh, another group called the Black Artists and Designers Club. Uh, in the meantime of her Rizzi uh, experience, she traveled to uh, London, Rome, Florence, and Viterbo. 
Uh, she had an interest in illustration initially, but late in her freshman year, she found an interest in textiles. Uh, her sophomore year, she immersed herself in textiles and found she made a, the best choice for her. Uh, for her junior year, she's staying off campus, uh, apartment where she cherishes the independence. Uh, she's, right now, she's very intent on working on getting an internship this summer, um, hopefully the Met in New York City. Um, as chair of the, of the social committee, Gwen and I are looking to help students and parents of color learn about the RISD experience, help them navigate the RISD environment, and enjoy their lives at RISD. Um, so next, uh, at, right now in this um, webinar, we have 157 families who registered for this event. While many families are from the USA, we also have families calling in from China, India, Barbados, Canada, Ecuador, Japan, Nigeria, Puerto Rico, Singapore, Thailand, and Taiwan. We are very excited to have them on this call. Um, some of the families are starting their RISD journey as, fresh, as freshmen, first year students, while the other parents of students ranging from different classes and those who have already graduated. So, we're going to introduce the speakers. Our speakers tonight are Kevin Jankowski, the director of the Career Center, and Kate Sacco, director of the Office of International Student Services. They will take turns presenting. Following the presentation, we'll open up the question and answer period. Kevin Jankowski is director of the RISD Career Center. He graduated from RISD with a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Illustration and has worked in higher ed for 30 years. Kate Sacco is the director of the International Student Services at RISD. Kate has a BA in Spanish and Public Communications from the University of Wisconsin, Eau Claire. Did I pronounce that right? Eau Claire. And a master's in international, I'm sorry, a master's in intercultural relations from Lesley University. Kate has worked at RISD for 12 and a half years. So with no further ado, I will turn the session over to Kevin. Great, thank you so much. It's, um, it's such a pleasure to be here tonight. And um, for Gwen and Charles, I don't know if you see right in back of me, but there's a loom <laughs> and um, friends gave us a Macomer loom recently and my wife is learning how to weave. So our living room awesome. is transformed into a studio quite um, frequently. And it Excellent. is so awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So I'm close to textiles right now. <laughs> And um, for all of you out there, um, it's really hard to believe, but in just about another week, it, for RISD, it will be a year um, since we went remote. Um, I know it, it changed everyone's lives. It changed my life. It changed the life of my staff. And um, one of the really big things is when we did that, um, it was so critical to us right away that we wanted to maintain a continuity of experience um, throughout the rest of the spring and through this next academic year. So to the best of our ability in this remote context, what can we do with our career programming, our career advising, our career events to keep the continuity of what would have happened when, you know, if we were on campus directly? Um, our office, like many offices, is one of the offices working entirely remote. Um, these were decisions by RISD, really important decisions to de-densify the campus in order to you know, really maintain COVID protocols. And RISD has done such an outstanding job with this. Um, and, um, and on top of all of this, um, my daughter's a sophomore in college right now. So I'm living it firsthand. Um, her feelings, her experiences, the decisions that you make as a family, um, of course, my hopes for her, not only in school, but what she'll do after school. And so uh, I just wanna tell you all that. Um, and it's really important, I think, um, to, to know that. So I wanna dive into the presentation now because I know you have lots of questions about what's been going on on the career side, what's available, internships, jobs, um, the impact of the pandemic, um, what's coming up for this summer. And I hope that the presentation provides you with a lot of insight, a lot of resources and answers a lot of your questions. In addition to that, then Kate will follow me. And then of course, we'll have a Q&A for additional questions after. So I'm going to share my screen now. And 
everyone can see the screen? Okay, I see nods, so um, that's always the best sign because uh, I want to be sure that we're in that zone. So, um, as I said, one of the we're at about a year anniversary, and last year we held the design portfolio review uh, at the convention center, and it ended up that um, we could only get into the convention center in February, and it was earlier than normal. We would have been at the convention center in mid March. So we, who knew, but we were able to do the design portfolio review before everything changed. Um, and last year we had 110 companies. I'm really happy to tell you, we're about to do the design portfolio review in a remote context. And as of today, we have 126 companies confirmed for the review, which is phenomenal news. Um, when we began this process of reaching out, we weren't sure what the reaction would be from, from companies, of course, in light of the pandemic, but to have even more companies than last year is just phenomenal and it's really exciting for us. These are some of the companies that have participated in the past. I'm sure you're familiar with a number of these brands um, and, and major design uh, companies in the US and abroad. However, you can see the companies and we're sending links through the chat. Um, you can see the companies that are participating this year and take a look at the 126 companies. You can also click through them and go right to their websites as well. So I wanna give you just a little flavor of those that are confirmed in areas of architecture, interior and landscape. Uh, Canon Design is coming. Uh, Cone, Peterson and Fox, um, a, a very uh, well-known and prominent firm as well as Canon. Olin, um, one of the top landscape firms, uh, will be attending the review and meeting with our students. Uh, and uh, Softy Architects, and uh, you might have seen, this is a really spectacular airport that they designed in China. And um, Softy will be meeting with our students and they'll get to talk directly to individuals from this uh, firm. In areas of graphic design, um, the branding agency Mythology uh, that's worked with Lady Gaga, as you can see. Um, a really a highly regarded digital design firm, The Mill, uh, will be meeting with students in graphic design and other departments. And Google will be attending, not only from the West Coast and their headquarters, but Google Creative Labs will also be attending from New York. And um, a highly uh, iconic design firm, Wolf Olins, um, will also be at the review. In areas of industrial design, um, the very highly regarded Frog, um, a, a really top design consultancy will be at the review. And another top industrial design firm, Smart Design, will be meeting with your students. Another great uh, consultancy, Doblin, which is a division of uh, Deloitte Business. And um, this alumni founded firm, which is really fantastic named Tellart, um, does incredibly immersive um, experiences that combine uh, digital and physical spaces. In areas of illustration and film animation video, one of Rizzi's top employers over many years, Hasbro, also one of the top toy firms in the world, um, will be attending the review. Some of you might be familiar with this card company called Love Pop, and they do these wonderful pop-up cards, and they've been attending the review in past years and meeting with uh, illustrators and designers of the cards. Uh, Disney and Hyperion Books will be at the review meeting with illustrators and again, other artists. And then one of the top animation studios in the world, Leica, that did films like Coraline, um, will be at the review as well. So these are just, a, I just wanna give you a quick flavor of some of the um, wonderful companies and, and businesses attending. So often a question that gets asked right away is, okay, if, if my student's attending, how, how will they know what to do? So we ran a program um, last week called Prep for the Design Review. And at this program, we go through everything. We go through what to expect, how to prepare, how do you research companies you wanna meet with. And then we go over a lot of those nuts and bolts you know, that we all have to sometimes be reminded of or learn. How do you introduce yourself to a professional? What should be in your portfolio when you're showing it? How do you network with professionals after you meet them? You know, can I ask about opportunities? Do you have internships and jobs and freelance? And then of course that all important, how do you follow up? 
and keep that connection going. Also, we've just are so big on giving lots of information at our websites, and we have a great FAQ for students that they can go through all of the questions um, that they're often thinking about right through the website. We also ran another program uh, just about two weeks ago called Internships and Jobs, Find, Target, and Apply. So we covered the resources that students can use to find internships and opportunities. We reviewed lots of directories. We talked about how you're preparing in for these experiences and apply. And then also really important, how do you develop your own internship experience? So if you're not finding something in, a, in an internship board or a job board, how do you craft your own? A really big issue is remote internships. Last summer, almost immediately, um, internships went remote. They went from being on site to remote. And I'm, I, I'm pretty sure a lot of the internships this summer will be remote in the same way. Almost immediately, um, the Career Center adopted uh, the guidelines for RISD, um, the remote guidelines for experiences. And uh, we always encourage students to review those guidelines for themselves. And we also um, share these guidelines with employers. Of course, it's really important to know how to register your internship, the credit situation, and what the deadlines are. And for all of you as families, the deadlines to register a summer internship um, is May 19th. So there's still a period of, of several months uh, to get that secured. Also, and I don't know if you had known, but back in the fall, in October, we ran a, our kind of first big remote event, and it was Internship Connect. And at Internship Connect, we had 60 companies who registered for that event and met with about 350 students uh, attended that event and got to uh, get an early understanding of the internship situation. All spring, we have quite a few programs coming up that are meant to prepare our students for experiences. Um, the Fulbright is a really big deal. Um, you may know that RISD is the top one of the top producing Fulbright institutions in the United States in our specialty category. Um, that program is run from my office, uh, and the success is phenomenal. This year, we submitted 10 Fulbrights, and I'm really proud to say that all 10 are semifinalists, and that's almost unheard of for an institution. So it's really great news. Fingers crossed, and we're waiting to hear how things unfold in the next couple of weeks. We do a lot of program and programming and collaboration um, with the Office of International Student Services and Kate, who's going to talk right after me. Uh, an important one and a program coming up, in fact, it's coming up tomorrow, um, is the Visa Options Program for working in the U.S. Uh, after OPT, Optional Practical Training. We've got another a great program coming up called Exhibition Opportunities. We are partnering with the New York Foundation for the Arts. And um, we just confirmed that one of the curators from the Mass MOCA will be one of our panelists, along with um, curators and gallerists from the Air Gallery in New York and the Front Room Gallery. And they're going to be talking about exhibition opportunities, emerging artists, and gaining really incredible perspectives on what the impact also of the pandemic has been. We're doing another program with Kate. We get a lot of questions about freelancing and self-employment for international students. Um, and again, Kate creates these great programs and we cross promote them to get even more students um, out to these really great workshops. Following that, we're doing a workshop specifically on freelancing. Um, the majority of students and the majority of alumni at some point are freelancing. And um, the program's called Ready, Set, Freelance. And we've been offering it every year and it's coming up in April. And then for a lot of us, we know that um, the resume and the job application gets us the interview, but it's that interview that actually gets you the job. I don't know too many people who love an interview, but we want to really prepare students to understand what goes on in an interview and how to ace an interview. So this program is a terrific one that's going to take place in April as well. And then just like we do everything for the design portfolio review, we do it for the fine arts portfolio review. So we have a prep for the Fine Arts Portfolio Review coming up in April. And you can see that the Fine Arts Review will take place um, at the end of April over two evenings. And we're reaching out right now as we speak to um, museums, galleries, uh, artist residencies, and fellowship programs. 
Now, as part of our preparation, winter session has always been a key time for your student to build up skills. Um, so we offered a whole array of those kind of nuts and bolts programming. Our resume critique workshop was offered remotely. Last year, we did the program in January and we had 100 students. This year we did the program in January and we had a hundred students remotely. So um, it was really terrific and the program went over very, very well. We partnered with Brown um, University and offered a Brown RISD Common Good Internship and Job Fair that was available to all of your students um, back in January. We also, every single year, we do a program tailored to first year students and offer career resources um, and services to them. And we offer that program as well in January. It's also extremely helpful to find grants and residencies. So we had our annual grant and residency info session. And then back to nuts and bolts, um, you know, a big part of getting a job internship opportunity is your portfolio. So we run a whole program on creating your professional portfolio. And then all important networking. And I can't stress enough during this time of the pandemic, um, how critical networking is and, um, and reaching out and doing that. So for that reason, I'm gonna, I wanna show you really quickly what happened recently. Um, on Friday, I did a presentation to about 60 students in the Architecture Pro Practices class. We do tailored presentations in various departments. So I was telling them about the design review and how these different firms were coming and really hoping that they go to the review. And I was showing them on LinkedIn how they can go and search for a firm like Softy that you just saw, and then they can search by RISD alumni. So when they do that, right now they can see that there are three RISD alumni working at Softy Architects that they could start to connect to. But then I showed them that they could go back in and actually do past company in LinkedIn and do RISD. When they did that, they actually found 13 RISD alumni that have worked at Softy. And a point I always make to them is, look, I could have worked at Softy for 10 years and just left. I'm still very valuable to you. So make sure that you connect to people that are working there now or connect to people who've worked there before as well. Now, here's an example. This alum who worked at Softy is now working at Robert A.M. Stern Architects. So what a great way for them to not only network with a firm they're interested in, but to find more firms as well. So this is something we educate them on all the time. Of course, also in LinkedIn, they can then go and research the firms. And in this case, they can learn about the hiring, whether there's increases or decreases, and learn lots of staff, um, the stats on the firm as well. Another big thing is we need them well prepared, right? So they need a good LinkedIn profile. So we go through how to structure that, make it more visual than you ever would for a, a standard resume. And we talk about profile pics and background images, and what they're really saying in that LinkedIn profile. Now, another really fantastic way to network is literally called the RISD Network. Um, this is a great new platform created through Alumni Relations. It started just about a year ago. There are now over 2,000 alumni profiles and about 700 RISD students have joined and made their profile. And this is a mentorship platform. So we really encourage students. We feature this at our career site. We tell them about it in career advising appointments, how important it is to get mentorship and to network with RISD alumni. And this is another great resource. Going back to um, workshops, we get asked a lot about business and entrepreneurship workshops. So during um, winter session, we ran the art of business. And um, here's another thing um, that's pretty exciting. We ran six career programs during winter session, five art of business programs, between the two, two of those with 11 programs, we had 3,000 3, students and alumni sign up for those programs, which is um, just amazing. Now, like everything, not everyone attends when they sign up. So a really important factor, I think, you know, especially for students who are do, you know, doing so much work at RISD and juggling so much, including the pandemic, there's a lot of, of great intention Sometimes they sign up and they don't attend. So it's really important, um, you know, we're gonna offer this every year and they can attend in future years. We also record a lot of the programming as well. So we offered um, workshops on selling your work online, which is obviously a, 
really big deal right now, more so than ever in the pandemic. Writing awesome contracts. And uh, Greg Kanan is an alum of RISD who went back to school to become a lawyer. And he's great with artists and designers. We talk about business entities as well as uh, developing a business plan. And then, oh, taxes, everyone's fun topic. So um, we have a great presenter who is an artist who's also a tax accountant. Like, how much better is that? And then another alum, Jessica Burko, um, is really become an expert on marketing for artists and designers, and she presented on that. So these workshops were terrific. They were heavily attended, and we'll offer those every year. On the topic of business, I also want you to know about our collaboration with Harvard Business School Online. In this collaboration, we are one of the only art and design schools part of this uh, collaboration. With this program, students will learn business analytics, economics for managers, and financial accounting, which is all part of the Harvard core program. Last summer, Harvard offered their program for $450 it normally goes for $2,250 for all RISD students. And um, pretty amazing, 187 RISD students took advantage of it last summer. And this was a great alternative if a student um, lost an internship or lost a job opportunity to take this program. I also contributed another $8,000 to cover um, 20 more students um, in the cost of the $450. And it was a really great experience. I'm happy to tell you, Harvard reached out to me recently, and they're gonna offer the program again this summer for $450 for all RISD students. So um, this is gonna be a really great opportunity again in the coming summer. Also grants and fellowships and awards are an important factor in the life of an artist and designer. Students again are seeing that through our resources and through workshops, through the RISD site. We have a whole array of um, offerings funding for internships, including the Meharam Fellowship. That fellowship provides $5,000 for an internship that impacts social justice and sustainability. And we just awarded the 10 Meharam Fellows for this year, and all students at RISD could apply for that opportunity. We also have another one that's in the works right now. It's the Undergraduate Internship Grants through the Creative Group and Textron Charitable Trust. Those provide $3,000 and we're able to provide 10 of those as well. And the deadline for that is March 23rd. We also have a range of partnerships with residency programs, including um, the highly regarded Anderson Ranch. And um, that is, uh, they're accepting applications right now. And we pay half the cost and Anderson Ranch pays the other half of the cost for those residency opportunities. Now, as we're getting to the end of this, I wanted to tell you about communication. Because sometimes we get asked, well, how does my student know about everything you're talking about? Um, as you can see, we produce a lot of programming every semester. But at the beginning of the semester, they get a blast email from us that lists all the programs, and they can sign up for all those programs on the spot. Every week, we send them another blast email with the programs taking place that week. And then if they sign up for the program, they get a reminder email the night before. Um, that's about all we can do because we're sending them a lot of information, reminding them a lot, and um, really encouraging them to be there. But if they miss a program, we are recording a lot of the programs. And so under events on a career site, most of our programs have recordings and they can go back and watch those as well. And you can see some of those programs here. In addition to that, um, we use social media pretty heavily. Um, our Facebook page is loaded with information on fellowships, grants, internship postings, and career programs. And we do the exact same thing on Instagram. And then finally, I can't stress enough how important career advising is to have a student sit down with us uh, remotely um, and go through what they want to do, uh, go through strategies, go through resources, um, they can sign up for appointments with the staff. The staff is so caring, is so knowledgeable, um, and just really is there to help your student. Um, we are very busy though. We schedule over 2000 appointments a year. We have student peer advising. 
and we also have drop-in appointments. Um, in fact, I was covering drop-in appointments today from 11 to one, and we rotate that among our staff as well. So I know that was a whirlwind tour of a lot of um, information, but I hope it gives you a better sense again of what is being provided. Um, and I'm gonna turn it over now. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen, turn it over to Kate, uh, and then Kate will present her information and then we can see all some further questions. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kevin. Great job. And I love our collaboration with yeah. uh, the Career Center always. Um, so I am going to start sharing my screen. Oops. All right. So again, my name is Kate Sacco. I'm the director of the International Student Services Office at RISD. And on my screen, there we go. Um, some of the things, just like a brief overview of um, some of the things that our office does and the services that we provide to students. Um, the students that we mostly serve are students who hold the F1 student visa. And currently we have about 750 students that are still enrolled um, that are visa holders. So um, we work with on and off campus um, employment authorization, which is what I will be focusing on tonight. Um, we help with that, just maintaining their immigration status, generally travel advising, which has been interesting in particular this year, um, cultural and language adjustment and navigating US systems such as taxes, um, which Kevin mentioned how fun those are for all of us. But um, so those are just a few things that, that our office provides to the international community. Um, some, I just a brief overview of some of the work options for, for our international students. The optional practical training is one of the most popular ones that students will generally, it's 12 months to work in the United States. And generally students will save this until after graduation um, so that they can gain work experience and practical training in their field of study. And actually OPT kickoff season was today. Um, they can start applying 90 days prior to their graduation date. So um, it's a great way for students to get some experience in the United States if they're interested in doing so. And it's a pretty broad, it covers quite a bit of types of employment because RISD still remains their sponsor. They're still on a student visa. It's, it's considered to be a benefit of their student visa. So um, we've been, we have Canvas modules for students that they've been going through and uh, lots of questions and lots of appointments building up to this exciting time. So another reason that we partner with Kevin's office is uh, uh, it kind of goes hand in hand with what some of the questions are that students have around this time of the year. So we're working on that a lot. Uh, curricular practical training is um, kind of what it sounds like. It needs to be part, an integral part of an established curriculum, which RISD offer, offers credit-based internships. So again, we work with the Career Center and uh, the student goes through the artworks process and gets that approved by their, um, the employer, the department, the international office, and then finally it goes to the registrar for the credits. And then they have to do um, evaluations with the registrar's office um, for the, I'm sorry, with the Career Center for the registrar's office to get those credits. So um, that process is quite simple. Um, our, we work with the students um, very closely with that. It's actually in comparison, I should have mentioned, optional practical training is applied for through the US Citizenship and Immigration Services. And there's about a three to five month processing time and a $410 processing fee. Whereas the CPT is a free um, work authorization, also 12 months actually, but can only be used while um, a student is enrolled full-time at the institution. So. Um, these are just general definitions. I didn't want to go down into too many details, but I will send the link of our website and where all of the information on the materials needed and how to apply are, are there. So um, on-campus employment is pretty easy. Um, all students are eligible to work on campus. Uh, the only thing is that they need to work 20 hours or less because 
school comes first. <laughs> so um, I we help them in that process, basically trying to get or not trying to, but um, applying for a social security number so that they can then begin working. And finally, I just wanted to mention because a lot of parents ask questions about how um, their student might be supported, uh, the non-resident students in particular with taxes um, because it's unfamiliar to a lot of students in that age group, but also um, just being from outside of the United States. So Sprint Tax is um, owned by TurboTax and we work with them and have students connected to webinars and resources there. Um, so that was my brief overview with, with um, the employment piece. I just wanna jump back quick. Um, and as Ken, Kevin mentioned, tomorrow night, we are going to be hosting um, a session with an immigration attorney to talk about visa options after OPT. So if students are interested in getting the H-1B work visa, um, the O-1 artist visa, the TN, and it, the list continues. So um, that is immigration attorney territory and we bring a wonderful one in to present to the students. All right, jumping right into travel and visas. I do not have a ton of detailed information in this area because um, you know the pandemic is still ongoing, but I will say that the most recent kind of good news is that phased resumption of routine visa services were announced um, on February 24th. So it is country specific. So I'm still telling students and families to watch the Department of State um, websites to look at the visa processing wait times. Um, I know a lot of people are waiting and I'm, I think that there's gonna be a pretty major backlog because you have a lot of students that intended to come last fall that now wanna come this fall. And um, our biggest goal in our office is just making sure each and every student has the immigration paperwork that they need in time with all the appropriate um, information and correct dates so that they can successfully get their visas and come to the United States. I miss the students so much <laughs> seeing them in person. Um, there are still a few uh, travel restrictions from, from certain countries. There is a little bit more ease, particularly in the Schengen area for um, student, uh, students on the F1 visa. Um, Chinese citizens are still going to another country prior and quarantining there and then coming in. So those restrictions have not yet been lifted, um, but the link, the other link that I'll send is for, it's uh, NAFSA, Association of International Education. And um, that's a really great overview. That's not in super regulatory based language. That's good at keeping updates on, on all the things that in one place that you might be interested in. So I'll send that in a bit. And finally, I just wanted to mention that just outside of the classroom, um, the different supports that are happening and programs, we're, we're very aware that our students are um, missing connection as many of us are, but particularly either, either starting at an institution or you know, finishing or in the middle, <laughs> wherever they might be, um, it's just tough to to uh, be in school and, and not have access to some of the things um, that they might have otherwise. So we are offering a ton of programs still and we're pretty connected on social media with other offices across the student affairs division. There's a lot of lectures and workshops as Kevin and I have both mentioned, but also in the academic departments are hosting some of those. Um, and most all of the sessions are um, being recorded so that students can follow up and watch them later or parents. Um, this is our contact information, which again, I will share once I'm finished with my, with my section, which is right now. So that's all I have and on to Q&A. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kate, for those great uh, presentations, very informative. I think you answered a number of questions that uh, parents had sent us ahead of time uh, through your presentations. And we have had also some uh, questions come up. 
I think I will read the questions out loud and then depending on who has uh, the floor, you will take you will then take on the question. I would like to invite parents to go to the Q and A and uh, type in their questions as well as uh, you think of more questions you have in mind. We are doing our best uh, answering questions. I know as well that some questions came up about how students are faring with uh, isolation during COVID, and I know Kate did uh, talk about this. At a little bit at the end of her uh, presentation. And I know that Student Affairs is uh, organizing a lot of programming for students. The RAs in the dorms are reaching out to students uh, to make sure that they're doing okay, they're not feeling too isolated. But now let me go through some of the questions. Okay, there is a question from uh, Michael Spagna who says, thank you for this impressive and extremely informative webinar presentation. Any suggestions from freshmen? Our daughter loves the school and we have recommended that she begin with the end in mind regarding career choices. And there is another question as well from another parent, Irene Quinn, about uh, uh, where does a freshman student start in terms of uh, internships, et cetera. So okay. those are two questions for you, Kevin. Yep, so a great um, for any first year student or first uh, freshman is to schedule a career advising meeting. Um, you know, it, I think one of the things that happens when you're a first year student is like, oh, this is so early. And, um, you know, I don't know exactly what I want to do, but I love doing these things. And maybe I'm going to go into this major and what can I do with that? So to just sit down, realize that you don't need an agenda. You don't need to come in with um, anything refined. You don't even need a plan. Um, part of sitting down with us is to start to think about this and develop a plan and learn about resources. Something that's so important um, for our staff is you can't make good decisions unless you know what's out there. And we want them to really understand what is often available um, outside of RISD in these different fields. What, you know, what's available in architecture and in industrial design and in sculpture, um, in printmaking, so that they can make very good and very informed choices. Then we also want them to know about resources. So a career advising meeting obviously um, I think is, is really important. And in addition to that, I think using your first year to um, also do a lot of research. And it's a great time to start to build your networks um, and use that kind of RISD clout to reach out to people and say, you know, if you're a, a student and first year student and you reach out to an alum who's been in the business even you know, 10, 15 years, 20 years and say, I, I found you on LinkedIn, I see that you're working in this field. I'd love to talk to you about what you do and, and how you do and how I can prepare. Now, at the same time, if there are opportunities for summer jobs, for freelancing, we can also guide them in that. The one thing, and there was a related question about um, what does it mean to register an internship or why is that come up? Um, the majority of students who do an internship uh, do it for credit. And if you do it for credit, you have to register it through the Artworks database. And in that process, it also has to be um, uh, monitored by the department head or the internship coordinator. Um, you have to do evaluations. So the student does an evaluation and the company does an evaluation. And then credit is given um, from the department. So you can't do it for credit unless it is registered. Now, the, uh, this has always been the case at RISD. Um, that decision only happens through the department and the department head and internship coordinator. Because of that, when you're a first year student, you're not in a department yet and representing a department. So technically first year students can't do internships for credit. That doesn't mean they can't do an internship, but they can't do it for credit. Um, so that's the key thing to keep in mind. We would still encourage any student um, who's a freshman or first year student that wants to pursue an internship uh, to meet with us, talk to us, and we'll talk about how to prepare and guide them into resources that are out there. I just want to add, um, just for, for the international students, they have to be enrolled for one full academic year in order to be eligible 
for an internship in the United States. So, and just to add to usually in the first year, um, the foundations program isn't going to authorize an internship because they're not yet in their department. Right. So um, they can't register in the same way, but they can do an internship in their home country or in a right. country outside of the United States. But I just wanted to mention that for the international F1 visa holder specifically. Yep. And you can see how it ties together between the areas as well. Yep. Thank you both. Now, a new question from Elaine Neville. Hello, what is the length of the RISD and Harvard Business School program for the summer 2021? Is it remote or in person? Um, so the program over the past years that we've participated, it's been now, I think we're going on our fourth year, um, was already remote. So it was online. It didn't have to switch gears. Um, it was never on site. Um, although very interestingly, um, when you took, there is a final exam, and when you took the final exam, you actually had to go to a site and take it at a physical site. During the pandemic, um, Harvard has made that remote as well. And I think they will continue to do that remote, but that was a funny feature of it. The program itself runs, um, depending on which session, runs 10 to 12 weeks. So it's a, you're talking like a full summer when you do it. And um, although the program can also take place during the regular semester. I, I really, I would never encourage that. Um, I actually had a graduate student in architecture do it about two years ago, and he thought he could do it during a regular semester. And he, and he finished it and he told me later, he said, he said, I so wish I hadn't done that. It was just way too much work between the RISD studio um, needs and the program. So summer is definitely the time that you wanna do it as well. And that's when the special offer is taking place too. Okay. Another question for you, Kevin. My daughter is a sophomore. When do you suggest they start the process for internships? I know that on the career website, you actually have a calendar suggesting timing for uh, students. This is a yeah. question from Denise Wong. So um, thank you. Well, thank you for all these questions. And um, it's a great question. Again, my daughter's a sophomore as well. So um, we just went through this. Um, my ideal scenario Here's my ideal scenario is you start your academic year in September, get grounded, come to Internship Connect in October, and we do it every October. What a great way to start to, and this is available at all levels, to start to you know, talk to companies, get to know them, learn about internship opportunities. Then in winter session, attend a lot of those nuts and bolts programming to refine your resume, refine your portfolio, start to get your credentials down. During January and February and March, conduct a lot of research, networking, look into companies, send a lot of emails. Um, and then a lot of the um, interview process takes place in March and April um, in order to kind of confirm internship opportunities by May. And then obviously our students usually begin the internship in June. So that's the cycle. That's kind of an ideal cycle. Now, if you're a sophomore right now, um, that I would you know, really start to dig in right now if you haven't begun it. Um, again, meet with the Career Center, attend further programming that I described, um, learn more about what's out there, and then um, just send out a lot of applications right now when you find opportunities and do a lot of networking. It's really critical. Um, if anything, and I don't mean this as an easy fallback, there really is a sense um, that old cliche, practice makes perfect. And I think for any young person, there's a lot of, you know, learning about, um, you know, crafting an email, crafting a cover letter to get people interested, um, being persistent, following up a lot with people. Oh, I didn't hear back from them. I can tell you in this world right now, I have to send emails at least three times. And those are to people I know really well, just to get them to get a response back. So I hear so many students will say, oh, I reached out and I'll say, well, how many times did you reach out? Well, I sent an email and they never got back and, and said they probably don't think I'm qualified. I said, not at all. I said, they're incredibly busy. They're dealing with a lot. They get a ton of email. So you've got to follow up again and follow up again. Be very persistent about this. So what I'm, why I'm bringing this up is I think if you go through the motions, you learn a lot. You get prepared and you get stronger in it. And that alone is worth the, the, the cycle. We do the exact same thing with grants. 
you know, the fact is with grants and awards, very likely you won't get it. I mean, that's it's statistical and competition. But the more you do it, the more you apply and the more you learn, the better you get at it. And I've seen so many students over the years who were persistent and landed awards years later because they kept at it and learned a lot. So just some advice on that. Thank you, Kevin. Yep. Now a question for Kate from Denise Wong. My daughter is a newly admitted international student who is studying in the US. So is she going to apply for a new I-20? And what is the deadline of that? Thank you. So I just wanna, I wanna make sure I'm reading that right. Um, if they're newly admitted, well, congratulations. Um, but I, so the admissions team does all of the newly admitted I-20s. So they will be reaching out to students and then the, um, the students can put all of the required documentation for the I-20 in the slate portal and admissions will work to get them uh, the I-20 that they need. But if they're already studying in the United States um, and they may be at a boarding school or they may already be here at another institution, then we will have their I-20 transferred into RISD. It's kind of like an electronic handshake with the other school. And um, we will bring them into the RISD system and um, issue them a new I-20. So we'll make sure that they get what they need. Thank you, Kate. Now, a question from Elizabeth Wiggs Cooper. Is first year students, if first year students are not supposed to do internships, is there a resource for helping them find summer art courses? Um, I don't know if Anu or Kevin, you would have yeah. any insights on that. Or should we follow up? Yeah, I mean, I, I well, one of the things for sure is um, Rizzi's own continuing education program has like phenomenally expanded its offerings um, in the pandemic. Uh, you know, we were very much a place-based um, continuing education program. And like everything due to the pandemic, it was able, they were able to open their program up to the world. It has been incredibly successful with the expansion of the program and offerings so, you know, looking into that alone internally um, in terms of art courses would be a very good option. You know, another thing too is um, there's so many um, sometimes opportunities that could be more regionally based. So sometimes if um, they're looking for a specific skill set to develop, um, going back to the career center side, meeting with us, asking us about, uh, you know, well, what if I really want to learn over the summer um, UI, UX, um, um, you know, user interface and, and user experience design, which can be an incredibly valuable skill. Um, where could I do that? And, you know, we might, um, you know, turn to a source like General Assembly and, and talk about resources like that. So, um, you know, just off the top, I would say CE would be a great option to look into, but definitely still chatting with us about what is the skill set also that you're trying to develop um, in that time frame. Thank you, Kevin. Yep. And now a question from uh, Sarah Tishner. Hello, my son is a senior. What specifically is uh, helping this graduating class? As I had, as I heard that RISD grad career rate went from ninety five percent pre COVID to ten percent. I don't, I don't know where that rate came from because we haven't surveyed that class yet. Um, so the class it would be the class of of twenty twenty. Um, and we will survey them that summer and then we'll really know there's no, there's been no survey of that class. I can tell you, we surveyed the class of 2019 and, um, we're, we'll have our infographics done in about another week or two and, and post them. And, um, in that class that was impacted by the tail end of the pandemic, um, the, the rate that we list for a student after graduation within a year where they've gained a full-time opportunity, part-time freelance or a post-graduation internship was still 99%. And we did have a 27% response rate on that survey, but it was still 99%. And that's what we will be posting. Um, now we asked in, the, um, in that survey, uh, did you lose um, an internship or job or part-time work or freelance due to the pandemic. 
and 50% of the respondents said they did lose. So they might have lost a freelance project, but still had a full-time job. So, you know, obviously there was impact um, and remains impact from the pandemic, but um, there's no survey I know of that um, indicates those stats because they would have come out of my office and that surveying will happen this coming summer for the last 20 weeks. So. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. And another question for Kate from Julia Gardner. My daughter is in furniture design, which is not on NAFTA's list for post-grad work in the US. Is there another visa for furniture design grads? Yes, so that's what the session is for tomorrow night. Um, the U.S. visa options after OPT. And I think the NAFTA list that you're referring to, that's the TN visa. Um, and there are very specific majors that are listed on there. But I think, you know, the O-1 visa, I've had a few students in furniture get the O-1 for outstanding talent or ability, um, also known as the artist visa. And um, the H-1B is another option. So there are different, we actually have, and I'll send the link um, or the employment link that I send the oass.rsd.edu earlier, that has the, the um, previous, both the recording and the PowerPoint of the immigration attorney. She does this presentation both in the fall and the spring. So if you wanna take a look through that or listen to the webinar, you're welcome to, to do so. And if you wanna join the webinar tomorrow night, you're also welcome, but there are other options. And Thank you. Sana, I also I was um, reflecting on that last question and there was the stat issue, but there was the more important issue, which was uh, what, are, what is being done for seniors and what's the, what is it like for seniors? Um, so I wanna be sure to come back to that. Um, and, you know, almost everything I, I've talked about tonight, um, I would hope that Every senior, you know, if they could, could attend every workshop, that would be my ideal because they would gain, you know, really valuable preparation for what it means to go out into the world right now. Um, I got to come back to networking though, because there are, I think there's a greater hesitation to make postings right now. Um, sometimes, you know, we hear from companies that if I post something, there's going to be just a, a lot of inquiries, almost like a feeding frenzy. And so an element of networking is getting to know those that are inside a profession, especially if it's student to alum or alum to alum, um, talking to them, networking, figuring out how to prepare and, and make an application. And then also to be on the radar when things open up. I know um, things turn around, a company gets a big project, they can hire again, they weren't hiring. So, um, and always I would suggest for you, the, this, um, parents, a son, or for anyone to, again, really sit down with the career advisors and talk through. And I, I also wanna add, um, after you graduate, we're here for the rest of your life. So this is not a career center where it kind of drops off a cliff after a year or two and you don't feel connected. In fact, um, we have a lot of use, sometimes heavy use from alumni, and that is great. So keep that in mind as well. Thank you, Kevin. Yep, I yep. want to be mindful that it is uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, which is the time the event was uh, going to end. But uh, I know we still have some questions in the Q&A. So um, if uh, uh, everyone is OK with it, I'd like to continue on for maybe 10 minutes or so uh, with some of those questions. And if we don't get through some of them, maybe we can follow up later. So is that okay? Yeah. Okay, Kevin. Yep. Thank you. Okay, there's a question from Thea Sachs. Can you speak frankly about how easy or hard it is for RISD grads to get jobs in the UK or elsewhere overseas? Well, right now, uh, honestly, I don't know. I mean, um, and that is because of COVID protocols, the impact. Um, that the pandemic has had on various economies. Um, you know, with a year ago, so many of the experiences going remote, um, to know what an individual, if they wanted to go to the UK and find an opportunity and, and move there and be on site, um, there's just not enough data that we've had come through um, to know that. And also the number of UK 
individuals who are again in the UK um, in the past year or so is is, is small. Um, so it's hard to know in a in a kind of a data sense, a granular sense, what that is. I think what this pertains to, whether it be the UK or any country or the United States, is again, what can I do to prepare as best as possible for opportunities that do arise? Um, and then where do I find them? You know, I was showing uh, a really good example when I was presenting to the architecture um, pro practices class on Friday. One of the things I talked about, we, in the United States, we have the um, American Institute of Architects, the AIA, it's a major professional organization. And it lists jobs and it's got directories, it's got a salary calculator. There's a lot of great information there. And what I wanted to remind students, and I actually used the United Kingdom, so it's pretty funny. Um, I showed them the Royal Institute of um, Architects and showed that uh, a British architects, it's RIBA, R-I-B-A, um, and how if they go to this association site, they can find architecture firms in all the different parts of the United Kingdom. And so what you are doing is looking for parallel structures um, using the AIA in the United States, using um, RIBA, RIBA in the United Kingdom allows you to conduct similar research. And a lot of the systems that we're talking about can be utilized in both countries. So um, th that is, and, and again, talking frankly, we just don't have the grounded data to tell you straight up what those percentages are. Thank you, Kevin. Yep. A question from Dana Robele. Since senior showcases are closed only RIS to only the RISD community, what is RISD doing to help textile majors whose work is better seen in person? Yeah, that's, um, it, it's a great question, right? Because textiles are so tactile to see it, to touch it. Um, this, I know this is, it sounds kind of a simple thing to say, but great photography. I mean, if you're gonna show the work digitally um, and you can't show it in person, or if you were applying for opportunities and had to mail samples, that would be obviously an alternative if you can't meet in person. But photography has always been, you know, whether you were showing slides years ago or are now showing your work digitally, you will forever hear at art and design schools, get great photographs of your work. Um, and a great imagery will help you better uh, gain an opportunity, get an internship, get a job, get an exhibition opportunity. So that's something that's been done at RISD for a long time. Often if a student isn't set up as well to do it, they can find other students. Almost always a department can assist them with that. But getting really great quality work, I think is critical. You know, we had a, um, th there's a terrific fellowship called the Wingate that's offered every year. And RISD has to nominate, um, can nominate up to two people for the Wingate. And it was about two years ago, um, the student Elizabeth out of textiles um, applied and she just had great photographic documentation. She also had great work and she, she won the national competition. She was one of 10 selected for $15,000 to support her work. And it was a, a really great example that they never saw the actual textiles. They didn't touch it, they didn't know, but they saw great imagery. So I would really stress that part about promoting oneself. And then again, there may be places where you mail samples, but then you gotta produce enough, right, to mail samples here, mail samples elsewhere as well. Thank you. Okay, another question. Uh, could Kevin, this is a question from uh, Catherine Allen. Kevin, could you please speak about uh, what is the recommended tra trajectory over the course of our RISD students four years? Should a sophomore be looking for an internship or is it okay to wait until junior year? I know you touched upon that a little bit with the calendar, but. Yeah, um, I, I absolutely, I would encourage a sophomore to look for internships for the reason I said earlier, um, that if you go through the motion and it doesn't work out, you've, you've learned a lot. You've learned a lot about reaching out, preparing, researching, that, that is just a huge lesson. Um, you know, even, um, you know, my daughter had applied for opportunities when she was in high school. She's applying for internships now. And, you know, just her, her writing, her introduction is stronger. She's more confident. 
And I think every year you do it, you just, you feel more confident and confidence is a part about that, right? Um, mm -hmm. To the point though, could you do it as a junior and skip sophomore year? Absolutely. And in fact, among co uh, companies, um, getting a junior may be preferred over a sophomore, right? Because you've got someone who has more experience, another year in college, more skill. Um, and that's something that happens all the time, even in non-pandemic times, right? But, um, you know, if there's interest, then I would encourage starting it this year. Um, but if you miss it this year, or it doesn't work out, doing it next year is also fine. Um, so that's on that point about trajectory and process. Um, and right back to freshmen, if there are first year students and freshmen out there who would like to pursue this, do the same thing. You may not be able to do it for credit, but you may do it not for credit and get a paid internship and that's also fine. Thank you, Kevin. And I think also trying on a few different years deal ties in a bit with the question that Linda Button is asking, which is how do you help uh, students learn to deal with rejection? And I know there's much more to it. But yeah. Uh, um, I, it's that's a, a great question for all of us, right? Um, mm -hmm. And I, I, I guess I want to tell you um, the career staff image when I showed it. Um, I when I said these people are so caring, Kate's office is exactly the same. Um, we are there to hear, to listen, to support, to cheerlead, to say you know um, to tell them in context like this does happen, and here's how you move through it. Um, to tell them that you get, I mean, this is easy, easier to say than to do, but you get stronger through the experience. And, and then there's also learn from the rejection, um, learn things you can make better. Um, we just selected for an award um, called St. Boltoff, um, and we have to nominate for St. Boltoff. And there was a student who's applied for three years now, and this year they got the nomination. And, um, I, I, I know this sounds like a perfect fit for what was asked, but um, the student emailed me and just said, thank you, thank you in the Career Center so much for the support you gave me over the years. I really wanted this. I kept at it. I kept reworking it and, it and it finally happened. And that's part of it, right? Is working through rejection, working through the negative um, to become stronger through it. Now, these are hard times. The pandemic has been challenging for everyone and really hard on students. Um, and we recognize that. We also recognize exhaustion. We recognize the stresses that they've faced. Um, and that's an important factor. You can't, you've got to see it and listen and acknowledge it and not, um, not talk about it, right? That would not be the right way to handle this. So just to give you a little insight about how we would handle that and how we work with students. Thank you, Kevin. So yep. perseverance. That's part of it, for sure. <laughs> part of it. OK, so I have two more questions I want to try to get answered uh, before we close. One is from Anna Miller. Uh, will that business program, I think she's referring to the Harvard program, be available to graduates this year or in future years? Yeah, Harvard's been really generous. Um, they have, over the past four years, offered it to graduating students. So um, it's really terrific. but. Um, you know, obviously a year later, you couldn't do it. Um, but as a graduating student, you can do it, which is, is really fantastic. Thank you, Kevin. Yep. And then last question from Edward Young regarding to industrial design and graphic design, which major has higher grad career rate? So um, they're really quite comparable, um, very, very comparable. And even um, salaries and, and work um, is very comparable. The difference, the difference um, might be a bit in non-pandemic times. I know we have like pandemic times, non-pandemic times, but in non-pandemic times, graphic design might afford a little more flexibility because a lot, there are a lot of freelancers in, and there's a lot in industrial design, but maybe even more in graphic design. So for a graduate who wanted more fluidity, um, to move from job to job, move to different parts of the world, move to different parts of the country. The ability to kind of take your graphic design skills with you and do that is maybe a little easier, a little smoother than an industrial designer 
in, in which, again, in kind of pre-pandemic times, you sometimes have to be on site in a firm. Um, if you're in a product sector, you obviously have to deal with a lot of prototyping and making, um, and you might not have access to that equipment as a freelancer. Um, so again, maybe a little more fluidity on the graphic design side, but in terms of opportunities, salaries, and uh, opportunities after graduation, they're pretty equal. Okay, thank you, Kevin. Yep. And I think with that question, we will close. I want to thank all the parents who joined and sent their questions ahead of time. I would like to also uh, thank uh, Charles and Gwen for uh, helping us host this event and leading us through uh, the efforts uh, as we plan family programming and provide more of those webinars to the family community. I want to thank uh, Kate and Kevin for your presentation and also uh, Anu and Claire and Mariam, who are my colleagues who are also behind the scenes, answering some questions, putting in some comments in uh, the uh, chat uh, and uh, making it easier for everyone to get access to uh, links as they were introduced during the presentation. Uh, I would like to let everyone know as well that as a follow up uh, to this uh, presentation that is being recorded, we will be sending out an email with a link to a survey. We love to hear from parents, see what's helpful to them, what they're looking for. So please take a few minutes to answer the survey so that we can uh, adjust our programming to fit uh, what we hear from you and uh, you will have access to the link to the recording as well if you missed part of it or want to take a listen again. Uh, thank you everyone for joining and wishing all a uh, happy uh, Monday or maybe Tuesday morning if you're joining us from uh, abroad.